Western countries are about to face arguably the greatest banking crisis that we've ever seen. Now, we've been warning you about this for months on this channel, so hopefully you've been preparing yourself because now this problem is accelerating right before our eyes. Rich people have already been making major moves to protect themselves, but it's the poor and the middle class which will be screwed unless they make some major pivots. Now, a couple of big data points and pieces of news that I want to bring to your attention, most notably, is China. Now, the West has been sitting back hoping that China continues its ridiculous zero COVID policy, which we all know was a joke. Well, President Xi Jinping last week made some major structural changes that should terrify Western economies. I'll get to China in a minute, but first, the central banks in the United States and Europe have been doing some really shady things that you need to know about. Number one, they are stockpiling gold right now. Just look how much gold they've been quietly buying over the past few weeks. What the hell is going on here? Now, you have a right to ask that question since the central banks have a currency that is not tied to gold or silver. So why in the heck are they buying up so much gold and silver? The United States Federal Reserve is openly hostile towards gold. Alan Greenspan famously loved gold, but then when he became Federal Reserve chairman, he couldn't talk about gold anymore because the United States dollar is not tied to gold. And then he left the Federal Reserve chairmanship, and then he suddenly started talking about gold again. Look, remember what, remember what we're looking at. Gold is a currency. It is still, by all evidences, the premier currency where no fiat currency, including the dollar, can match it. Isn't that amazing how that happens? They can start telling the truth when they're no longer in power anymore? Many of the largest gold transactions over the past few weeks have come from central banks. Guys, it's happening right before our eyes. They're not buying gold just for their health. Well, actually, they are kind of actually buying it for their health if you think about it, but they won't admit it. They won't admit that their government currencies are in a free fall. And last week, we saw the first real indications that the United States dollar is in real decline. Now, for over 10 years, the U.S. dollar and treasury bonds were seen as a hedge against volatility, a safe haven. But with a good CPI numbers and lower yields now for bonds, investors start running back to gold and silver over the last week away from the U.S. dollar after 10 years. It looks like this dynasty of the U.S. dollar is coming to an end. When you have a central bank with a massive balance sheet that continues to print money, it's only a matter of time before the collapse is bound to happen. Now, we're already seeing it massively in Europe. Just look at what, ha what is happening with those ridiculous inflation numbers and the decline of the euro. Now, Western governments, particularly the United States, have been buying gold. But largely unreported is the fact that these Western governments are stealing gold. That's right. Perhaps you know, of course, the story of the United States stealing all of the Iraqi gold, and we most recently stole billions of dollars from Afghanistan. But this is happening in other countries as well, all throughout Africa. If the United States dollar is not tied to gold, then why are we hoarding so much of it? Well, here is Alan Greenspan on that point. You know, this is after he left office. Watch. Well, you know what's interesting is gold is still significant. I ask myself if it's an, a, a relic of some a long history, why is there a trillion dollars held in gold by the world's central banks plus the IMF and all of the other financial inst institutions? If it's worthless and meaningless, why is everybody still holding it? Trillions in gold. Why? Well, the answer could be simple. We're scared of it. The bottom line, it's a threat to Western central banks. We are terrified of gold. It's been a stable currency since the Roman Empire tied their currency to gold. So what better way to neutralize something that you're scared of than buy it up, put it in a prison so no one else can have access to it or steal it? Just watch this incredible piece of video that went viral late this week showing the new Italian Prime Minister Maloney slamming the French government for going into Africa and stealing gold from the people in order to keep them under the thumb of Europe instead of letting these people flourish on their own resources. Watch. This is called Franco CFA. È la moneta coloniale che la Francia stampa per 14 nazioni africane alla quale applica, alle quali applica il signoraggio e in forza delle quali sfrutta le risorse di questa nazione. Questo, questo è un bambino che lavora in una miniera d'oro in Burkina Faso. 
Il Burkina Faso è una delle nazioni più povere del mondo. Per il Burkina Faso che ha l'oro, la Francia stampa moneta coloniale. In cambio pretende che finiscano nelle casse del tesoro francese il 50% di tutto quello che il Burkina Faso esporta. L'oro che questo bambino si infila in un cunicolo per tirare fuori finisce per lo più nelle casse dello Stato francese. Allora la soluzione non è prendere gli africani e spostarli in Europa, la soluzione è liberare l'Africa da certi europei che la sfruttano e consentire a queste persone di vivere di quello che hanno. So the West is stealing Africa's gold, and if that wasn't bad enough, the billionaires at the World Economic Forum this week are now ordering Africa to pay $2.8 trillion dollars to meet its obligations under the Paris Agreement to minimize greenhouse gas emissions. Way to keep your thumb on Africa so they can never climb out beneath the oppression of Europe and the United States. But someone who is not only climbing out from beneath Western power, but is about to surpass Western power, is China and the other BRICS nations. Now, it was fully on display this week at the G20. I really think we saw a major shift at the G20 this week because Russia announced that over a dozen countries have now applied for membership to join the BRICS nations, the BRICS nations being Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, who have a currency now that is backed by gold. Iran, Argentina, and Algeria have formally applied. Iran, alongside Russia, India, and China, is already part of the Eurasian Quad, which is very strong. Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Afghanistan are extremely interested in becoming members. They are mineral rich. Indonesia just applied in Bali this week. And then there's the next wave, Kazakhstan, the United Arab Emirates, Thailand possibly applying this week in Bangkok, Nigeria, Senegal, Nicaragua. If these nations join BRICS, that would represent roughly 45% of the confirmed global oil reserves and over 60% of confirmed natural gas reserves. That combined GDP in today's figures would be roughly 29 trillion. That's much larger than the United States at 23 trillion and at least double the EU at 14 trillion, which is falling very fast in the EU. So that means BRICS nations will increasingly be using the Chinese banking infrastructure instead of the US-led IMF and the World Bank. A major shift, guys. They're going to use gold while the United States uses debt. That's right. This is huge. You're seeing the balance of power shifting from the West to the East to a BRICS currency that's backed by gold and precious minerals. Even President Biden was supposed to have a meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. And the Chinese said, no, you're going to come to our location. We're not going to your hotel. So President Biden, with his tail between his legs, went over to the Chinese delegation hotel, had a three and a half hour meeting with China. And China asked for a number of things and the United States said okay to all of them. And guys, I've just been looking at a lot of the analyst data on China over the past you know, week or so. And it is staggering to see their change and their outlook for China. What they're seeing is massive growth over the next year. So those are the news items that I wanted to bring you. Now I want to tell you about a sponsor for today's video, which is a gold producer that I've been incredibly bullish on for a long time now. You've heard me talk about them before. They are Gold Mining Incorporated. Their stock is up over 3% in the last five days. As it's becoming increasingly clear, the rush towards gold is heating up and the US dollar is starting its slow march to death. Right now, their stock is 95 cents a share, but there's an analyst price target of over $6 a share. And that's where analysts see this stock going as the demand for gold continues to rise. Now, let me tell you why this company is a game changer and why I'm such a big fan of them. Gold Mining Inc. is a company that is actively bringing gold out of the ground at an incredible pace because of the demand right now. But what's crazy about this company that you can invest in right now, and here's their stock ticker on the screen, it's GLDG. They're on the New York Stock Exchange, so one of the big boys. What's crazy is their secret catalyst that only smart investors researching Gold Mining Inc. stock know of, and it's at the company's cash and marketable security holdings. So they own over 20 million shares of GROY, G-R-O-Y, now, which is a company I told you about a couple of weeks ago here on the show. That's a very fast growing gold royalty corporation in the stock market. So not only is Gold Mining Inc. actively sourcing gold in a variety of projects from Brazil, America, Canada, Peru, and more, but they are shareholders in GROY, a gold royalty juggernaut that makes money off of other mining companies. 
Again, that's what a gold royalty company.